In this video, we're going to do our second example of the disk method um, to find the solid of a, uh, the volume of a solid of revolution. So we're being asked to find the volume of the solid form by rotating the area trapped between the x-axis, x equals 1, x equals 2, and the function f of x equals the square root of x squared plus x around the x-axis. Okay, quite a mouthful. So these problems are all very similar, so I like to break them down into steps. And step one is sketch the problem. And the sketch can be really rough. It doesn't have to be anywhere near perfect. It just has to be kind of close. So I like to do the easy parts first. And x equals 1 is just a vertical line at uh, x equals 1. And x equals 2 is a vertical line. So those are easy. And the x-axis is already drawn for us, so now we just have to worry about this function. And the way I like to do this is to simplify this a little bit. So imagine we didn't have this plus x bit in the function. We just had the square root of x squared. Well, the square root of x squared is just x, or, or the absolute value of x. But either way, it's going to be a straight line when x is positive. And so that's really easy. So if we add back this x part, it's like a straight line, only a little bit bigger because we're adding x to it. So I'm going to draw it kind of like a straight line, but maybe make it a little bit curvy just to kind of indicate that maybe it's a little bit bigger than a straight line. And that's all there is to it. Um, it's a rough sketch, but it gets the job done. And now we can clearly see the area we're looking at is trapped between these two vertical lines, the axis and the function. So that's our area that we're interested in. Okay. Good to go on that. Sketch is all done. Step two is decide on a method. And this isn't relevant. Uh, for our example because I told you we're going to use the disk method. So that is decided for us, but eventually we'll learn the washer method and the shell method and we'll have to decide which method is appropriate for our problem. In this case, I'm telling you disk method will work, so let's go for that. Okay, and once you decide on a method, I highly, highly, highly recommend writing down the formula for that method that you're going to use. And so this is the disk method formula when we're rotating around the x-axis, which we are in this problem. So this is for rotating around the x-axis or for rotating around any horizontal line, so anything parallel to the x-axis. All right, so we've written that down. We've decided on that method. Great. Time to move on to step three. And step three is find A and B. In the disk method, we have these bounds of integration, and we need to figure out what they are. And for the disk method, those bounds are just the leftmost and rightmost point of the area, which in our case is very easy. It's just x equals 1 and x equals 2. Those are the leftmost and rightmost points of that trapped area. So, okay, that's pretty easy to find in this example. a equals 1 and b equals 2 those leftmost and rightmost points. And now here comes, you know, maybe the harder part or the more interesting part. We have to find this r of x function. And so what is r of x? Well, the way to think about this is first pick an x value uh, that's uh, within this function, uh, within that area that's trapped, and draw a line from the x-axis out to the edge of that area. And now we're going to imagine spinning this line around the x-axis, right? So uh, recall, we're doing what we're doing is we are rotating around the x-axis here. That's where we're rotating that area. So if we just picked a slice of that area, just a line, and rotated it, we would get a circle. And that original line I drew from the axis to the edge of the area, that is the radius of that circle that gets formed when you rotate. Right? So all in all, what we have is this line here. Oops. Uh, let me. That line there is this radius we're looking for. So this is r of x. Given this x value, the height of this line tells us the radius 
of the circle that's formed when we rotate that line. Okay, but if you notice, this point right here, this is on the function. And f of x tells us the height of points on the function, right? Given an x value, f of x tells you the height. So this is f of x. And that height is the distance from the x-axis to the point on the function. So in other words, f of x is this radius function we're looking for. Given any x value to find out the, the distance from the x-axis out to the function, which we said was the radius, to find that distance, that is just the f of x, the height of that point. Okay, so all in all, we found our x. It happens to be, in this case, just f of x. So r of x equals f of x, which is the square root of x squared plus x. In the next video, we'll do an example where r of x is not exactly equal to f of x. Um, but for now, it is, and it was in the last example too. And I hope you understand why. And so now we're pretty much done with the problem. We've figured out a, b, and r. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. This whole video has had a mistake. This should be r of x squared. It's pi r of x squared. Okay, so now we just plug in, uh, we plug our information into this formula. We have a, b, and r of x. That's all we need. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the integral from a is 1 to b is 2 of pi times r of x is x squared plus, square root of x squared plus x, because it's just the same thing as the function. And we have to square that according to the formula. Okay, so just for absolute clarity here, this bit is r of x. That was, we figured that out in step four. And according to the, the formula, we have to plug that in and then square it. All right, and now we're pretty much done with the problem. All of the hard work is over. We've done all of the setup and all of the thinking. And now we just have to kind of chug through the busy work of finishing this integral. Okay, so we'll do that now, but just be aware that once you get to this point, the problem is pretty much over. You've done all of the hard work in setting the problem up. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this integral. So this is going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of pi. And when we square a square root, it just gets rid of it. So this is x squared plus x dx. And now we can pull that pi out because it's just a constant multiple. And then we can use the antiderivative power rule. So we add 1 to the exponent, that's x cubed, divide by that new exponent. Do that again, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. And then we evaluate this between 1 and 2. So we go ahead and we'll plug in 2. And that gives us 2 cubed over 3 plus 2 squared over 2 minus, and then we got to plug in 1, so we get 1 cubed over 3 plus 1 squared over 2. And now it's just a matter of simplifying this. And I'm going to use a, a little trick here. I'll notice that we have a 2 cubed over 3, so that's 8 over 3 minus 1 over 3. And we also have 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2, so I'll just group those and subtract all at once. So this will give us pi times, um, let's see, 8 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is 7 over 3 plus 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2 is 3 over 2. And we're very close to being done. We just find a common denominator here. So this is uh, 14 over 6 by multiplying top and bottom by 2, plus 9 over 6 by multiplying top and bottom by 3. And now we get our final answer, which is 23 pi over 6. OK. so. That is the answer. That is the volume that we were asked to find. It is the volume of the solid of revolution formed by rotating that trapped area around the x-axis. So it's the volume of the solid formed by rotating this area around the x-axis. OK, I hope this was helpful. In the next video, we'll do uh, a more advanced e example, and we'll keep going from there. OK, see you then.